We've talked a lot about micronutrients over the years here on Ag PhD. Today we want to really simplify this for you and talk to you about four key things. Number one, how important micronutrients are. Even though you don't need many, they are very important to raising a good crop. Two, we want you to test your soil for micronutrients. Three, test your plant tissue, test your crop basically for micronutrients next season. And four, consider using blended products rather than either trying to blend your own or just throwing one micronutrient out there and forgetting about the rest. Well, micronutrients are certainly important. When we look at our crops, whether it's corn, soybeans, wheat, whatever, we seem to almost always get a positive economic return putting micronutrients on that crop. Now one of the things that we did a few years back we did plant tissue analysis across 650 different farms and in almost a hundred percent of the cases we found one or more micronutrients to be low to deficient. Everybody's got this issue. It's not just oh that's an issue in South Dakota where we farm or oh that's an issue in Iowa. It's an issue everywhere with every crop. Just like we have to put on N, P, and K all the time for about every crop we're raising, we also need a low level of micronutrients to go out there as well. If we're loading up our soils with N, P, and K, that's wonderful, but we have to keep things in balance. Otherwise, our yield limiting factor is gonna be one of the most essential nutrients that we're short of. In many cases, it could be a micro. And we have all different reasons for why micronutrients might be short. Number one, you're using some up. Yeah, I know you're not using a lot, but you're using some. Two, you could have micronutrients tied up in your soil. So they're sitting there, but they're bound up with things like calcium, or aluminum or iron, they're just not going to be available. Also, in terms of these micronutrients, some are leachable, like boron, for example, so if you get a lot of rain, that can flush down. Others are almost immobile in soil, like zinc, so if you have an eroded side hill, guess what? Your zinc just went down the hill with the soil when the soil erosion occurred. So it could be any number of these different things. That's why we want you to test your soil and especially do some grid sampling or zone sampling. Don't do composite sampling. That doesn't really help you a whole lot. And then also do some plant tissue analysis. Like Darren said, you know, when we did this big study a few years ago on 650 different farms, it was very eye-opening to all these farmers that participated, just very revealing how important micronutrients are. Because for many of these farmers, they were in good shape on NP and K, everything else looked good. You know what their yield limiting factor was? It was a micronutrient that literally cost a dollar or two to put out there. That's it. And they'd invested hundreds of dollars in everything else they'd done, and something that was just a dollar or two was what was holding them up. Well, the other thing is it really confuses farmers when they look at a soil test and they say, well, it looks like I have enough zinc out there. It says I'm in the medium to high category. But then when we pull plant tissue analysis, we can see, well, wait a minute, something's tying up that zinc or inhibiting the uptake because our plants are drastically short yeah, in so zinc and we're getting a good yield response putting more on. Well, that's the reason why we commonly have farmers applying blended micronutrients. That's what we found on our farm, blended for the crop that you're raising. In other words, corn needs a little different ratio of micronutrients as opposed to soybeans, as opposed to wheat. So get a blended product that's right for your farm, for the crop that you're raising, and then that will get you a long ways down the path that you need to go. Well, one of the big problems too is you only need just a small amount of each one of these micros. It's very difficult to apply a tenth of a pound of boron across an acre. How do you get that spread right. just right? And if you say, well, I'll just put a pound out and I'm good for 10 years, then all of a sudden you have tie up of other nutrients because you have such an excess of boron. So you have to be real cautious about whatever nutrient you're putting out there that you use these blended micro products so you get the right ratio so you don't have any big tie up issues. Well, micronutrients could be a yield limiting factor on your farm, but so could weeds. Hopefully it's not our weed of the week though. Can you identify this week's weed? 